Good afternoon, dear brethren, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Good morning. Ah, uh, no, good afternoon. It's 12.08, my time here. Um, very quickly before we begin, this is going to be a quick video. I know that on Saturday, I mentioned that there probably wouldn't be a video done today, but I'm not in charge here. Okay, I'm not, this, this isn't, I'm not the one who dictates what goes on around here as far as this is concerned. I, I'm not in charge of this, okay? Um, I'm not, okay? You know, I'm not doing this, <laughs> okay? Anyway, one, one second. All right. Also, I wanted to mention to you, brethren, to please, I'm um, going to be calling the electric company here in about an hour and a half or whenever um, to hopefully get that whole thing that I was stupid about fixed. So um, please, please, if you're a brother or a sister and you see this, please pray for your servant. Please pray for your servant on that, that the Lord's will be in that and his hand be upon it. But anyway, I'm going to thank you. Delusions. Delusion. How many of you, now this, this stems from a golden conversation that a brother and I had last night, um, and things are working on that. Um, but I wanted to bring this up. I, 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 I'm going to be a little nitpicky here, okay? Because remember, according to some of these Christians, even, <laughs> it's strange, even the ones that ought to be the most nitpicky aren't. You know, the, the king and Bible-believing Christians. You know, the certain people who say, well, uh, you know, uh, Scripture doesn't say certain things about certain things. You're wrong. People, if this is silent on something, think about this. If the authorized version is silent on something, then how truly sufficient is it? You, uh, your argument, well, it's sufficient for our salvation. This is true. But if you believe this is perfect, like King James Bible believing Christians purport, if you believe this is perfect, without error, given by inspiration, then if it being perfect, without error, then anything you throw at the scriptures Somewhere within there is the answer to the question. And people, I've, I've proposed this before, and people have gotten really nitpicky, meaning trying to find loopholes. They'll bring up stuff about um, mo money laundering. Well, that's stealing. Okay, or they'll get up about a cloning and stuff like that. When you boil it down to its brass tacks, it's very simple. But see, people, in order to justify themselves, will get... Um, uh, very complex, thus in complexity will obscure the simplicity of the truth of God. Okay, does that make sense? Hmm? Here's my point. How many of you, what are you thinking, Ken? How many of you have heard of the strong delusion? Now, did you catch that? How many of you have heard of the strong delusion? How many of you have heard of that? The strong delusion. I remember even that, that, that lovely individual from Maine even had said in one of his so-called sermons where he has made the statement, I was like, well, what's the strong, what's the strong delusion? I believe it's the rapture. But, but the point is, even he has said the words, the strong delusion. How many of you have heard that? The strong delusion. The strong delusion. Hmm. Get, your, uh, get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please turn with me. This is a little impromptu, but then again, this doesn't really need to be that, that deep. Because it's quite obvious. The strong delusion. 
And what I have seen over the years that Christianity, Christians will look for a specific thing. And they're right in that in an extent, but see from a specific thing branches a myriad of things. Does that make sense? A little seed, when you put it into the ground, it's, by, it's just its little singular seed, but with water and whatnot, it sprouts and have many things that come out of it. Okay? But again, the strong delusion. Hey, Christian. Hey, King James Bible believing Christian. Find me. Pay attention. Pay attention. Find me the strong delusion. Find it. Oh, Brad, you're being nitpicked. See, if you go off of the premise of the strong delusion, what could happen? People could be deceived in looking for one single solitary thing while they're looking at that, a whole river of stuff goes right underneath them. It's like with the Antichrist. There are many Antichrists. Again, find me in the authorized version of the scriptures. Christian. King James Bible even Christian. Find the, the Antichrist. It's not there. Find me. Go ahead. I'll give you a thousand bucks of money I don't have. Find me the strong delusion. Now you're going to go to 2 Thessalonians. But see, I have heard people, so have you probably, who have taught, you know, like I said, the, the, the wonderful individual from Maine has even, in one of his many so-called sermons that he has, he has even said the phrase, well, you know, what's the strong delusion? I believe it's a rapture. He actually said that. He actually said that. And those of you who follow that guy cultishly, you would know that he said that. He has made the phrase, the strong delusion. What is the strong delusion? I believe it's the rapture. That's uh, almost a verbatim quote. Okay? And like I said, you of his who are cultic, okay, unbeknownst to him, you would know that better than me, wouldn't you? Okay? But the point is, the strong delusion is not in Scripture. Shut up. Isaiah chapter 66. How do you find the answer to this is simple. Look uh, in scripture for the word delusion. Now there are two variations of the word delusions. Delusions, plural, which we're going to look at first mention, and singular, which is in 2 Thessalonians. Okay, now, strong delusion. Delusions does have a singular base. Yes, it does. But, again, the analogy of a seed that is planted and sprouts, that singular beginning ha branches out into many things. And what is the basis? Where is the, where is the, cat what is the catalyst? Where is the starting point of strong delusion? Well, before we read in Isaiah 66, go to the very familiar, it ought to be to you, saint. Go to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. That's what, you know this by heart, most of you saints. I want you to think about this. What, what is strong delusion? Genesis 3, 1 on verse 5. Now the serpent, that Satan, Lucifer, was more subtle than any beast in the field which the Lord God had made. Satan is a created being. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. The very first thing that Satan did was question what God said. Okay? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. 
Verse 3, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Verse 17 in Genesis chapter 2. Brother, you always got to do this when you come to this. You have to make this distinction because the enemy is so petty. They strain at a gnat and swallow the camel. Okay? They are so petty. You got to do this. Genesis 2.17. This is what God said. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt die. And Eve said in Genesis uh, 3, verse 3, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it. We just saw, that's what he said. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. God doesn't say that you shouldn't touch it. Don't eat it. Eve, for whatever the reason was, added to the word of God. Okay? Maybe she thought she was doing well. Hmm? Maybe. How many of you want to add to the scriptures with the idea that it might be doing something well? Got to watch out for that. Okay? That, you can liken that on to those who hide behind the truth, all things are lawful for me, to justify sin. Okay? You got to watch out for those types of people. Okay? Verse 4. And the serpent, Satan, Lucifer, that old serpent, the devil. Okay? And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. You're not going to surely die. Now see, the thought here is that Adam, Eve, and whatnot, they thought if they were to eat of it immediately that they would immediately fall over dead. That is not what happened. An animal had to die to cover them. Yes. But they died gradually with time. Okay? It wasn't instantaneous death, even though instantaneously the innocents died. Okay? And see, that's, that's a trick of Satan. You might not think, well, if you do something right away because judgment against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the sons of men's hearts are set to do evil. Okay, I just bradized that from Ecclesiastes. Excuse me. But eventually it catches up with you. Okay? <laughs> Trust me. Verse 5, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, do contrary to what God said. Hey, 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 guess what? This is a work. This is a work. Okay? All right? Don't eat of the tree. Guess what, genius, easy believest heretic? That's a work. You idiots. Tell people it's by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. You're an idiot. But see, the backdrop, the canvas that you are working on has been prepared for you. Meaning that mankind has been conditioned against the word of God, so they'll believe anything you tell them. And that's very sad. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, God is the only one who truly knows what is good and what is evil. And he has given to us what is needful to know what is good and what is evil. The scriptures, the authorized version. That's why Satan, through Rome, gives you the Bibles, counterfeits, something other. Okay? Man, in and of himself, in and of himself, cannot know rightly what is good and what is evil. You need God for that. You may think you can. You might get a little close to it. But ultimately, mankind in and of himself cannot know perfectly what is good and what is evil. You need God for that. So, when you look at self-theists, okay, who are their own gods, you look at anything that is contrary to God, what's there? Ye shall be as gods. 
You are your perfect standard. Okay? All right? So, so, Isaiah 66, verses 1 on to verse 4. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? Now this was written under the law, where they had a temple. Today, God dwelleth in temples made without hands, your body. Okay? For all those things hath my hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is of a poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Poor. Right away you think of financially poor. That's, that does encompass that, yes. But that's not all it's relegated to. Okay? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Okay? But to this man will I look, even... To him that is poor, poor in spirit. Yes, this encompasses lack of fundage, but poor in spirit. When you got Christianity is hardly anything but poor in spirit because they are their own gods. It's all about self-exhortation with Christianity, especially with some of these quasi-denominations, uh, such as Pentecostalism, where self is exalted because, well, I got the gift of tongues. You're just not good enough. Or, I've seen the Lord. Okay. Or, King James Bible believing Christianity. Okay. Or, Catholicism. And see, in that which is not the faith that was once delivered on to the saints, somewhere in there lies the premise, the main fulcrum, if you were, if, if you will, if it were, um, exhortation of self exhortation of self. Remember, dear friend, idolatry is always the extension of the true idol. When someone's worshipping a Christmas tree, oopsie, excuse me, I didn't say that. I'm not bowing down and worshipping it. You don't know what true worship is. You don't know what true worship is. Hey, well, you know what? That, that's a good idea. Let me write that down. So that the heart of worship, heart of worship, okay, a defensive measure. Well, I don't bow down to it and worship it. That encompasses worship, yes. But what worship truly is, link will be in the description box, is a little bit deeper than some of you want to believe it is. And see, so you want to keep it at a certain level that way you can justify it and still feel good about yourself. Still feel good about yourself. But, but to this man will I look, even him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, contrition. Okay. Poor. Brokenness. Contrition. I put him on the cross. And trembleth at my word. Lowercase okay, w. Fear of the Lord. Lord scared the hell out of me 16 years ago through the book of Romans. How about you? Verse 3. He that killeth an ox is as he as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that blesseth incense, uh, excuse me, he that burneth incense, as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And their soul delighteth in their abominations. All things are lawful for me. I can do it. You're making a big deal out of this. All things are lawful for me. You're, you're preaching doctrines of devils, am I? 
You're the one who is hiding behind the truth of Scripture. It is true. Cannot deny that, won't deny that. But see, you're using the truth to justify something that is wicked. One too many of these Christians do that. Why? Because you have chosen your own ways. Haven't you guys figured out that these movements that are of men falter, get fragmented? Haven't you figured that out already? If it's of the Lord, it's going to bring to pass. See, we're in the last days, and the Word says that men will be lovers of their own selves. That's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. But y'all have chosen your own way. How many of you Christians go, are under the guise of like, well, find a Bible that speaks to you. <laughs> Authorized version, which is not a Bible. It, you know, it's the scriptures. Okay. Yes, it says Bible there. Yes, it does. Bible, by definition, is a collection of books. Yes, but the text, it doesn't say that. Okay? Okay? You can make the argument, well, in the Bibles it doesn't either. But see, you got to make a distinction. Distinction. Distinction, distinction, distinction. The enemy will make a distinction to attack the true word of God. Why are the saints, supposedly, um, not bothering to make that distinction themselves? Verse 4. I also will choose their delusions. Plural. More than one. Delusions. To dilute something is to add something to it. Like you dilute something. Like you have water and then you put a little uh, uh, strychnine in it. You've diluted it. Okay? Alright? Delusion. Now, whether or not that's the root, I don't know, but, okay. Strong, strong delusion, okay. You're choosing your own way. You're choosing a form of religiosity that you're adding in the premise and thought that, well, it's good. I also will choose their delusions. I will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. First appearance of the only two appearances of the for any form of the word delusion in Scripture is right there. Number one. And you see that context. You see that in verse 1, the Lord says, Okay, uh, where is the house that ye build unto me? People will eventually, and as they do today, make the actual physical building the idol. The Lord, uh, uh, even, you know, uh, talked about that in Matthew 23. Okay? You also see true, the true heart of the matter. Someone who is poor, contrite, and trembleth at his word. Poor, broken, contrite. My fault. Trembleth at my word. Have this hell scared out of you. Okay? And then you have the ordinances of killing the ox, sacrificing the lamb, offering an oblation, okay? Written under the law. I believe reference onto the current dispensation where those things are not necessary at all for salvation. Actually, you read Acts chapter 21, okay? Acts 21 just before an offering was to be made, well, Paul was there, the Lord intervened and said, uh-uh, you ain't doing that. Okay? All right? 
And also in verse 3, you see that that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to do that. Then the Lord's like, okay, you want to do something like that? That will be contrary eventually to salvation because you rightly divide the word of truth? Okay. Yea, they have chosen their own ways. And their soul delighted in their abominations. Deck the halls, buddy. Why do I keep going? It, th that's so blatant. It's so blatant. The historicity of the facts and the way people twist scripture even to justify it when it comes from Rome. It's, a, it's actually a very perfect example of the depth the, of idolatry. And remember, idolatry is always the extension of self. You, you should be as gods, knowing good and evil. You know what's right. You know what's good, right? Hey, you got scriptures that tell you rightly what is good and what is evil. But yet, you only go so far, you don't go deeper to justify. And because you delight in these abominations, whatever they are, okay, I will choose their delusions. Now, encompassing the lost individual, go to Romans chapter 1. Go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Oh, verses 18 hmm, on to 25. Very familiar. Uh, actually, let's read from 18 to the close. How's that? Can you handle that? Brad, you've read that before. I know I have. I know we have. Remember, you are only as uh, valid as your latest video. Except for saints who, you know, will go through and stuff like that. But that's how the, that's how the algorithm works. That's how it works on this uh, wicked platform. And it is wicked. It is wicked. They'll take down videos that talk about truth but promote uh, sodomite marriage. They'll pr promote disgusting channels like um, Lucas and Kibo. Okay. And uh, Josh and Hi. All right? Yeah. Don't ask. Leave them alone. But anyway. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and, uh, and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You guys who rightly, rightly quote, all things are lawful for me. That is truth. Yes, you can do anything that a lost person can do. Yes, that is true. Not denying that. But see, you some of you guys will throw that out to defend something that is wicked. And that's your problem. And people love you for it. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shewed it unto them. For the invisible things from him, from the creation of the world, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The Godhead. Jesus Christ is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. What does that mean? God is comprised of three. God has a spirit. God has a soul. God has a body. Okay? You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Okay? You want the evidence of God's existence, if the mirror can take it, look at yourself in the mirror, Jack. All you stupid self-theists out there, um, there's no evidence your God exists. 
look at yourself in the mirror if the mirror doesn't break okay look at yourself you have a spirit you have a soul you have a body and some of these guys are like I don't believe in a soul <laughs> well that, that's good for you very proud of you that's very nice very, that's very nice yeah you're a little uh, uh, arrogant Ch tone will change sooner or later it will and I remember some of that that's what they always say well, well yeah yeah but see, by the time you find that out, you will be reminded that you were warned. Therefore, it's going to sting for you even more, buddy. Okay? Anyway, let's continue. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, only a mental acknowledgement, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Fool says in his heart there is no God. But their imaginations, oh, like the fairy tale of evolution. <laughs> uh, yeah, the perfect example, evolution. <laughs> Millions and millions of years ago in a galaxy far, far away, nothing exploded. Nothing. What happens when you die? Nothing. Hmm. So then you're going back into nothing from once nothing came nothing, right? You, you, you evolutionists are... You call me crazy. <clears throat> Why is all this, though? Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You are your own standard. You are your own standard. You know, the sooner, some, especially you of the King James Bible-believing <laughs> movement, the, the quicker you realize this and uh, get this through your thick heads, um, the better off some of you will be. Okay? In Isaiah 14, verses 13 and 14, Thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. He shall be as God's professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, man is the first thing mentioned, and to birds like the stupid thing of the Trinity, and four-footed beasts and creeping things, four-footed beasts like the golden calf, singular which they called gods, and creeping things like Nehushtan, the serpent on a pole that you see on the ambulances here in America and elsewhere in other nations. Wherefore, God also gave them up unto uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. You want to believe a lie. You don't have a love of the truth. Okay. God will oblige you. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. Who is blessed forever. Amen. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. Because there was no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie. He speaketh of his own. For he is a liar. And the father thereof. Of lies. You are your own God. That was from the beginning, the Genesis. In Genesis, which means beginning. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even the women to change the natural use into that which is against nature. Even the women, uh, lesbianas, like the one Tracy gal who, was like, who knew about Leviticus. It's like, well, well hey, hey, hey. No, it says about mankind. It's like, huh, it does. 
but you can't get away from Romans. Okay. Anyway. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense with the sea, a noun, of the error which was meat. You ever witnessed to a Sodomite before? <laughs> God hates fags, right? Repent or perish. They're expecting that. Have you ever dared to stand shoulder to shoulder? Some of you are so weird about that. Ew, it's like, dude. Okay? That's a spirit, soul, and body right there. All right? And unlike sodomite Stephen Anderson, who believes in the Calvinistic uh, reprobate doctrine, uh, sodomites can be saved. Have you ever stood shoulder to shoulder with one and in Romans pointed it out? Hmm? No, God hates facts, right? Pants or perish. It's like that one video I saw the one day where there was the, the young sodomite guy. Honestly, I mean, at least his countenance and his visage said so. And he's like, tell me, what's the, what's the answer? The guy was holding up one of those God hates fag things. And the guy was, the, the side of my kid was playing with the dude. It's like, tell me. And here's what the guy did. Exactly this. Penta perish. And of course, the young side of my kid got, you know, went off the handle. It's like, okay, well, well, yeah. Explain it to him. Explain it to him. Show him. Okay? Show them. But see, promoted today especially the worst kind promoted through religiosity you should be as gods you are your own standard pick a I mean come on pick a bible that suits you how stupid this 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 the authorized version has nothing to do with preference <laughs> you could well, the lord yeah the lord preferred to make the authorized version Okay, you, okay, but personal preference as far as the scripture? I don't read this because I prefer it. This is the only one there is. I happen to love God's word too, by the way. But this isn't a matter of preference. This, this is all there is. This is the actual, real, living word of God. Yes, this book is alive. The Lord speaks to you through it. Hence, makes it alive. Okay? And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now, like I said, Sodomite Steve Anderson, and that, that, I, I'd say that even though he'd take out his AK-47 and blow him in my head off, okay? But, uh, and yes, Stephen Anderson's a sodomite. I'd say that to his face, 12 inches from his face. I don't fret man. I would. He'd probably whoop the snot out of me pretty easy. <laughs> got quite a temper. You'd think I got a temper. But uh, I, I would. I would. That guy works for the Jesuit order. Is Stephen Anderson an actual Jesuit? I don't think so. He clearly, like so many others, work for the Vatican. Because he promotes the majority of Catholic doctrine. Like I, we've talked about before. If you were to ask Stephen Anderson, he'd tell you this is the perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God. And he himself calls himself a King James Bible believing Christian. And then you blokes out there want to argue, so we're the real ones. And the whole time, the brand, as it were, has been diluted. You guys, you guys really sometimes are really something else. Anyway, reprobate means, yes, you're a reprobate mind, but see, God can recover you from that. Someone who has been given over to a reprobate mind, yes, can be saved. They're not, that does not mean automatically that they're gone. Okay? 
However, that does make it difficult to come back. <laughs> but that does not mean that they are beyond salvation. No one today is beyond salvation. The problem is God doesn't force salvation on people. Okay, he does not. All right, you have to make the right choice. God can save anybody. But he's not going to do it coercively. He's not going to do it by force. And the farther one goes, the harder it go becomes to come back. That's there. But God can save anybody. So this reprobate doctrine that God won't, can't save certain people, that's a lie. That's heresy. God can save anybody. But God's not going to force it. Okay? You've got to remember that. Watch out for that. Being filled with all un unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, covetousness, hmm. maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, Deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, all things lawful for me, inventors of evil things. Deck the halls, buddy. Disobedient to parents, without understanding, departing from evil, covenant breakers, Without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. There's strength in numbers, remember? Like uh, that, that twit devil guy, um, One Message Foundation. Look at the comment section. Wow. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Now go to Second Thessalonians chapter two. The strong delusion. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together on the hymn that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, or case us, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. We've talked about falling away. Lost people fall away. Saved people fall. Lost people fall away. Okay? Except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Third rebuilt temple that I personally believe is going to be built where the Dome of the Rock is. That means that the Islamic temple there is going to have to be kablooied. Once that happens, you Muslims, you crazy Muslims, and I'm, I'm saying that to you out of love. Your, your religion is crazy. Your, uh, your Islam is crazy. It's of the devil. It, it, it came from Rome, pal. It came from Mystery Babylon. What can you expect? Okay? But once that gets kablooied, you guys, you Muslims, you're going to go nuts. You've even, many of you have verified that. And then that man of sin, son of perdition, is going to turn his focus on you. Because like we've talked about it, I believe in the last video even. Christians are not the problem. Christians are the problem. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, they won't be the problem. It's going to be you guys. And Satan has said it that way. Anyway. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let the body of Christ. 
God is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. He's not going anywhere. Okay? Countless scriptures. Where will I go from your spirit? Okay? If I uh, go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to hell, you're there. You know, God is bigger than so many of you want to give him credit for. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? And then shall that wicked be revealed, the son of perdition, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Jews require a sign. But yet, the Pentecostals believe that the sign gifts are still applicable. Replacement theology. They think they're the Jews. Think about it. Because they, they're the ones who need it. You're, you Pentecostals, you're the ones who think you got to speak in blah, 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 to prove something. You Pentecostals think that you've seen it. Yeah, you've seen it. You haven't seen the Lord. Okay? And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And then cometh unto the Father, but by him. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Okay? And for this cause, God shall send them now. So look at it carefully. Shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. There it is, the singular, a lie. Okay? But strong delusion. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And this is what from stems, stems from the strong delusion. Oh, I don't even around here. Good for you. I believe the strong delusion is uh, people not rightly dividing the word of truth. That is a strong delusion. But here's the point. As we have already looked at. Ye shall be as gods. You are your own standard. Can one of you please, in the comment section, tell me what is a greater, what is a stronger delusion than that? Now think about that. Well, the rapture, right? Huh? Hmm. I don't think so. What could be stronger delusion than someone thinking they are their own God? You tell me. Tell me, what could be stronger? What could be stronger? And you might go, the redemption of the purchase possession. It is because of your rejection of truth, because you are your own God, that you don't want to believe the truth of the redemption of the purchase possession. So see, the basis for your rejecting the redemption of the purchase possession is what? Ye shall be as gods. Same with rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth, that's, that's necessity. But it is be your refusal of that is what? You know better. You are your own God. See? See? And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You're your own God. You might want to argue, well, that's already been, happened. Uh, there are some out there who, you know, not, uh, not that badly yet. Okay? It's a present tense. You want to reject the truth? You want to think you know better? God will, you know, send you strong delusion. You're your own God. You, you got a smorgasbord of religiosity to choose from. 
Go ahead. You choose what you like. What Bible suits you? And so on and so forth. What could be any stronger than that? So, seriously, tell me. I would like to know. I would like to know. Because you look in the history of Scripture of Israel. What happened? They were their own gods. They thought they knew better. They wanted, They went after idol, idols. Gods that they set up. Because the idol is always the extension of the true idol. What's that? Yourself! Why don't, you, why don't some of you get this? Why don't some of you want to accept this and get over it? But we, oh, that they all might be damned who believe not in not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. And what's more unrighteousness, what's more unrighteous than thinking that you are your own God? Tell me, please, please. Tell me. Tell me. I'd like to know. I'd like to know. I'd like to know. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the capitalist spirit and belief of the truth people and chosen you go the chosen way of the cross whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ therefore brethren stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught whether by word or our epistles S epistle excuse me so, right there, and uh, Catholics love that one. And I've even seen King James Bible believers go to that to justify Deck the Halls, pal. I've seen it. Okay, I've encountered it. The traditions that he is talking about are the ones that are founded within the Scripture itself. Our epistle, meaning... Our epistle, whatever. Look, see, and this is what you guys got to do. Okay? Like that, that idiot uh, uh, from One, Mich uh, One Message Foundation. Okay? Most of the contra contradictions that you people are going to encounter come from you not rightly dividing the word of truth. Example. People like to look at Paul and Jesus. Stupid head. Uh, stupid head. Christy Burke. Uh, that uh, stupid head. I'm writing that down. Okay, stupid head, Christy Burke, that Bart guy. Okay, they're like Paul and Jesus spake two different things, two different dispensations, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, perfect example. James and Paul. Okay, they're back to back. No. Book of James is doctrine written for the Hebraic Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because it's a clear contradiction. Paul teaches, yes, we are saved by his grace through our faith, Scott. Okay? James makes it clear. Can his faith save him? That's a contradiction. What's the problem? No problem. Book of James is written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Rightly dividing the word of truth. <laughs> That's how you answer the majority of the contradictions that you people think you, have, you can find are easily explained by rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? But there's another aspect. There's another aspect. Okay? All right? For example, Taking your time and examining the verse. For example, look at verse 12. Or uh, in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Look at verse 11. Read it slowly. 
And for this cause, what cause? Those who don't love the truth. God shall send them, allow, send them, okay? It doesn't say that he, look at that, look at it carefully. He's sending them. Is he, does this say that he is actually deceiving people? No. They don't love the truth, so God's going to give them what they want. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Ye shall be his gods, knowing good and evil. What isn't cleared up by rightly dividing the word of truth is simply line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, taking your time and actually looking at the verse. Give you a real good example of this. Leviticus 19, verse 28. Even Jesuit James White, <laughs> Jesuit James White has done this. Saints getting tattoos. I've ran into Christians who've gotten tattoos. Supposed to be saved. Okay. My, my wife has tattoos. She got those when she was lost. She doesn't know any better. She didn't know any better, okay? Okay? All right? But point is, all right? Leviticus 19, 28. Now, let's just read it. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Okay? There you go. Now, I have encountered some Christians. It's like, well, I, I got like uh, the one gal that I used to know of got a verse from uh, Second Thessalonians uh, tattooed on her arm. And then when I questioned her about it, I said, well, it's not for the dead. How many of you have heard that from these Christians? Even Jesuit James White got a tattoo. Well, I'm not doing it for the dead. And he knows better. But then again, he, he's Jesuit. Okay? Despite what Mr. Smiley Dave from Chick Publications wants to think. Look at the verse. Ye, plural, more than one, shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. And you read in the book of Kings, one or two, where uh, they cut themselves as a sign of mourning. Self-mutilation in paganism was a sign of mourning, i.e., the Catholics who will flagellate themselves on the back with a miniature cat of nine tails, okay? All right, as a sign of mourning. Self-mutilation as a sign of mourning is prohibited. Okay. Now, let's let's ignore the comma. Okay, let's ignore the comma. Even there is a comma there because you never know with some of these petty people. It's like, well, in the originals there were. Okay, let's ignore the comma. There's a comma right there, but let's let's ignore the comma. Let's ignore ignore the comma. There's a word there that you can't get around. What's it? Nor. And not noir. Smart Alex. <laughs> nor. Not Noreen. Nor. Also, you could say maybe. Look at the verse slowly. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Nor. A shift. Adding something to this. See, cutting yourselves for the dead as a sign of mourning, that's one thing. What's the other? Print any marks upon you, I am the Lord. That distinguishing nor takes as a shift from the one to the other. Okay? A saint is not to get a tattoo. Okay? Tattoos are evil. 
Hey! Yeah! Tattoos are evil there, buddy. Like even Ozzy Osbourne, the Prince of Darkness, said. You want to be original, then get a tattoo. And I don't have any, by the way. Thank you very little. <laughs> okay? I don't. But see, if you don't examine it and look at it, especially when you want to justify something, choose your own way. Well, how do you twist that? Well, it's not for the dead. How many of you have encountered that with some of these Christians? And see, here's the thing. Some will be, well, that was the Old Testament. Oh, you let me divide the word of truth? Huh? Well, that was the Old Testament. It's okay today, right? Any one of you, any of you, please, show me, show me, anywhere in the New Testament, anywhere, where the prohibition against getting tattoos is resolved, is dissolved. Show it to me. Any, show it to me anywhere in the New Testament. Show it to me. Show it to me where God now says it's okay to get a tattoo anywhere in the New Testament. Show it to me. What will some of you cute people do? I've encountered this myself too. I've have you encountered this one, brother? Sister? Revelation 19? Have you encountered this one? Again! Again! The majority of the contradictions that you people think you can find in Scripture are explained by rightly dividing the word of truth. Other ones, like one guy, at one point he's uh, this age, and yet in another, in another part he's another age. Examine the context carefully, pal. Look at them very carefully. Line upon line, precept upon precept. But see, you guys who are looking for something to find a contradiction, you'll find it. Because you don't rightly divide the word of truth and you don't painstakingly examine it. Revelation 19. Revelation 19. All right, where is that? Ah, uh, uh, where is that? Uh, uh, where was that? Oh, one second. Let me find this. Sorry about that. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. And he hath on his vesture, vesture, an article of clothing, and on his thigh a name written, the vesture that is on his thigh. I have encountered someone coming to this saying that Jesus had a tattoo. Really? And they came to this. It's like, are you crazy? Well, yeah, you are. Look at the verse. Look at the verse. And he had on his vesture an article of clothing on his thigh and on his thigh a name written. The vesture was like something like this. You know, short leg or something like that. Okay. All right. It was on his vesture, which was on his thigh. A name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Look at the verse. Slowly. Okay? Jesus Christ did not have a tattoo. Okay? I've, enc I've, I've, I've encountered that. I've encountered that. <laughs> From a Pentecostal woman, no less. But yeah. You look at it carefully. And also, too, and that's another thing. If something is still binding today from the Old Testament, 
it's not undone. But see, for example, the dietary thing. Every, most people are aware that in the Old Testament, you couldn't eat pork or shrimp or, uh, or uh, uh, scallops or stuff like that. Okay, but it's always pork. Everybody's got this big thing against pork. Okay, pork is awesome. You know, you get the lean back bacon, eh? And oh, you, you don't like pork. But hey, you don't want to eat pork today. Good. Knock yourself out. We're not, Romans 14, we're not supposed to judge one another upon what they eat. Okay, that, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you want to be a vegan, vegetarian, knock yourself out, buddy. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. I ain't going to judge you for that. Don't you dare judge me for wrapping up my, uh, my, my pork steak with bacon, okay, and lard and uh, pig uh, rinds on it as well. Okay, don't you judge me for that, okay? That, that's very simple, okay? But everyone points to the eating of pork. I remember Mark the Messenger brought up this thing about, you know, we're supposed to not eat pork. And stuff like that. But then again, that guy's a devil heretic trying to bring you under the law anyway. That guy's not saved. But here's the thing. The dietary restriction was dissolved for us today in this dispensation. Why and how? Why? Because God said. Because the law was given on to who? The Jews. Okay? Alright? The Ten Commandments and stuff like that. Today in this dispensation, uh, keeping the law, going under the law to be saved, stay saved, and be right with God is not a requirement for salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile, okay? All right? But the dietary restriction to the Jew first and also to the Gentile was dissolved for us today in this dispensation. Prove it to you. Number one, it's not where the Lord Jesus Christ, under the law, was talking about all things that go into the mouth or cast out into the drop. Okay, the law was still binding then. Okay, before the death, burial, and res resurrection, the law was still binding then. Okay, you get me? So when he spake that, it was in context of under the law. Okay, of being kosher. It is not in the book of Acts where the Lord gave Peter a sign, the sheet come down from heaven, okay, with all manner of animals, unclean beasts, and he says, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter says, not so, Lord. And then the Lord said, what I have cleansed, call not thou common. That's not where you go. That's not what that's talking about. That's talking about how the Gentiles have been grafted into the Jew, into the tree of the Jew. Okay, what the Lord said was in context under the law. Where do you go to prove that you can have a pork sandwich today? Being a Hebraic Jew. First Timothy four. Verse one on verse five. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now what better way to seduce someone? It's like it's okay. Don't worry about it. They, these, these, these saints guys are, are that that Conwell KJV, he's just being nitpicky. He's made, you're, you're teaching the doctrine of devil. You're justifying Rome. Yo ho ho. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You know, you take your steak and you put it on the grill and you get that black stuff on it. Then you, you flip it over. That's called searing. Okay, it's cooked hard on the outside. You stab it with a knife and the juices come out. Okay? You can't kill your conscience. Ted Bundy. Those of you who know who Ted Bundy. He did not kill his conscience. He seared his conscience. Jeffrey Dahmer was a saved man, a saint waiting for us in heaven. Okay, uh, 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 what was his name? Uh, Gacy, John Wayne Gacy. Okay, he seared his consciousness. And boy, you want you you want to hear an expert at uh, justification? <laughs> yeah, listen to that guy sometime. Okay. 
But anyway, you can't kill your conscience. You can sear it. You can't kill it. You can't. Forbidding to marry. Right away you think of Catholic. But there was uh, the, a certain movement about men not getting married, being virgins. Hey, hey whatever, do it. You want to do that, that's fine. Okay? But when you preach that as a doctrine, like everybody thinks of Catholicism. And yeah, with celibacy. But it's more than that. There is also in Buddhism a form of celibacy. There is. Also in some forms of Hinduism. Not all because uh, there is a, a, Hindu, a very nice uh, Hindu couple that are down the road there. Very nice. They're husband and wife. Okay, but that is also uh, present in some forms of Hinduism. Okay? All right? So it's not just relegated to Rome. All right? But forbidding to uh, marry and, to, and commanding to abstain from meats... Catholics with Lent, Islam with pork, Black Hebrew Israelites with pork, modern Judaism, which is not scriptural Judaism, which is not binding salvifically, okay? Some Hinduism, some Buddhism, also abstaining from meats. Which God hath created to be see, received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. But see, when you're your own God and you don't rightly divide the word of truth and you don't look at things carefully, line upon line, precept upon precept, you can fall into these traps. For every creature of God is good. That includes bacon. That includes shrimp, which is the fruit of the sea. And also scallops. Scallops is really good. And calamari. Oh, calamari is really good. Really good. I don't know if squid was an unclean animal, though. The eagle was an unclean animal. The raven was the unclean animal. And wasn't it interesting about Elijah that uh, the raven, an unclean bird, gave... God's prophet bread. Go figure that one out. Oh, you can you can tie that into Romans 11 in so many ways. But anyway, let's continue. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be, re be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Sanctified by the word of God meaning that what we just read, it's all good. Be received with thanksgiving and by prayer. That's why we give thanks for our meals. Okay. Before or after is fine. Okay. Uh, my wife and I brought up a really good conversation. We had a really good conversation a while ago, the other day. Um, and that encompasses quite a while ago. Where we were talking about, it's like, well, you know, we pray for our meals. It's like, of course we do. You know, thank you. You know, thank you. Sure tastes better than dirt. And thank you, Lord, you let us eat pork. Because we, we like pork. And my wife, oh, she can make, she made this German potato salad the other day that had some burnt bacon in it. Oh, boy, good stuff. You needed to know that. But we, we, we had this wonderful conversation. It's like, when should we pray? Before or after? Give thanks for what you are to receive, whether it is before you eat or after you eat. Okay? That, that, you know, that there is some evidence in Scripture that points more to eating and then giving thanks. Okay? There is, because he eateth and giveth God thanks. That's in the book of Romans. Okay? You, can, you could make an argument that, well, maybe we should do it before. Or, or after, okay? There is evidence that suggests that, hey, maybe it... But see, the point overall is that for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If you do it before you eat or after you eat, give thanks for your food, okay? 
Right here is where you go to show people that the dietary restrictions under the law are not binding salvifically today. Hey, you want to be kosher, you want to you wanna be whatever and not eat pork, you're missing out. Go ahead. Go right ahead. Knock yourself out, buddy. Go, go for it. You want to be a vegan? That's crazy. But hey, you want to do that? Go for it, man. Don't let me stop you. Don't let go right ahead. Go. Get fat and happy. Suckle until you can suckle no more. And show me the bosom for almond milk. I mess my case. Okay, just, just say it. But, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. When you got someone coming around telling you doctrinally as pertaining to salvation, like Mark the Messenger. Mark the Messenger, he was all about that because he, he's a devil. He's a heretic. He's guiding people into hell. And he is a shame unto his kindred, just like John MacArthur is a shame unto my kindred, Japheth, such as Paul Washer, okay? Oh, let's go down the list. Um, Jesuit James White, John MacArthur, uh, Paul Washer, uh, Ray Comfort, okay? Uh, that Stephen Furrick guy, uh, okay? Anybody who's on TV, all right, <laughs> okay? Mr. Robert Breaker, Mr. Gene Kim, and he's shem he's Shemitic, he's Shemitic, okay, all right. You you got to remember this too, brethren, about the kindreds here. The Babylonian religion began in Ham, Babylon. Ham is Babylonian, okay. But when you look at the today, Rome is Japhethian. Rome is Japheth. And Rome is the ultimate evil. It's Satan's church. Then you have the Shemites. The Shemites, the Asiatics. And there is a general quality to the kindreds. There, there really are. Uh, especially um, the Shemites, you know. Any of you, like I've mentioned before, have any of you actually tried to witness onto Japanese people? There's a lot of Shem in the Japanese people because they're Shemitic. Just like the American Indian, dwelling in tents. It's Shem's tent. Okay? Shem, tent. Okay? The American Indian. They're Shemitic. Okay? All right? But, anyway, that was a little rabbit trail, okay? The dietary restrictions that were under the law today are not binding, and you go to 1 Timothy chapter 4 to prove so. And see, with the thing with the tattoos, find anywhere. That, like I've said, I've encountered a thing in Revelation 19, verse 16. But it's, it's, see, he had a tattoo on it. No, he didn't. He had something written on his article of clothing that was on his thigh. He didn't have a tattoo. See, that's that's the depths people will go within strong delusion. And when you've been given strong delusion, that branches out to anything. When you are your own standard, when you pick and choose what you're going to believe, from the perfect standard and justify that which is evil. Strong delusion, I will choose their delusions. So, that's going to be it for this little video. Just, just wanted to touch on that. Just wanted to touch on that. If you come across the Christian who talks about the strong delusion, um, get on them about that because it does not say, we just saw it, it does not say the strong delusion. 
believe a lie. Yes. Yes. But see, strong delusion is what? Again. What stronger... What stronger delusion could there be than you thinking you're your own God? And see, when you think you're own, you, your own God, you can go off into many directions. So, just, just wanted to make this little video to talk about that. I'm um, going to get this uploaded, and then I'm going to make a phone call. So, um, thank you, dear brethren, for watching this if you do. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.